Welcome to SA Great with JP Drake and we are talking about everything South Australian and the amazing things going on right here in South Australia. And we're at the Big Shed Brewing Concern. We're gonna have a talk to Jason and Craig about some of the exciting things that are going on right here in South Australia. And let's face it, what doesn't go well with beer? Well, nothing comes to mind because everything goes well with beer. And as you can see, there's plenty of beers to choose from right here in South Australia. So here we are at the Big Shed Brewing Concern, which that's an interesting name in itself. I'm here with the owners and like the guys that make all of this happen. Jason, Craig. Well, hello. Thank you very much for having us here in what's been a crazy six weeks. There's no doubt about it. But let's go back to the name. Who and how did that name come about? Well, like most things that we do, it came about over a few beers. Um, Funny about that. Yeah, yeah. And we had to come up with a name. And, and back in the day, we were brewing in Jason's uh, agricultural shed. So that's where the big shed bit came from. And then we're like, well, why do we call it like Big Shed Brewing Company or whatever? And we just went, ah, it's a bit too serious. Too formal. And you've got to put in a uh, submission to the government, you know, for the names that you want to do in case it's, I don't know, blasphemous or whatever. But we just put on there, Big Shed Brewing Concern. And that's the one that got through. A lot of people ask us, you know, what is that, where does that come from, that concern name? It's like, technically speaking, it's an old sort of time phrase for a business. But we took it from the Simpsons, the Osaka Fish Concern. <laughs> Knife goes in, the guts will come out. That's what Osaka Seafood Concern is all about. Uh, and that's kind of how we roll the whole business from there. So, yeah, we take the beer seriously, but we don't take too much else. We should have some sure. fun. We're making beer, we're not solving any sort of world diplomatic issues. No, those issues are solved once the beer has been exactly. drunk. It doesn't hurt. You don't solve the world's problems over white wine. Amen. That's exactly you right. Have a beer. It, it has to be beer and I agree with that. So moving forward with what you're doing, you've got some funky named beers. Um, and one of the things that got my attention with you guys was the brew chops. Yep. And obviously we do a lot of um, business with men's and we sell a lot of fruit chops. So that was when I started to go, hey, what do these guys do? And, th and that really started me following you. So do you want to tell me some stories behind how you're coming up with the labeling, how you come up with the names, and do you pick certain things that you like to be able to go with a golden stout time? Because it doesn't say gay time. No, no, no it doesn't. Not there's anything wrong with that. You've got to stay clear of trademarks. We're a bit smarter than that now. Um, no, no, some of, the, some of the products actually get a name before their product is made. Others are a product and then we go, we still don't know what we're calling that. Yeah. So for instance, um, Cherry Popper is actually quite a, a weird reference because in Sydney, a juice box is called a popper. Yep. So we went, right, okay, it's a cherry, that pop up, the bang, and then people are going, hey, you're being sexist. No, he's the, so we actually had a conversation trained with our designers at the time that weren't in-house. And we actually screenshotted the conversation on email and said, if you think we're being sexist, there's the conversations verbatim, read it, there's a transcript. So we, we were, at every step of the way, they'd come and make it pink. There was a kiss in the corner. We're like, no, no, stop. You're making it <coughs> appeal to one sex versus the other. It's an alcoholic beverage. It should appeal to everybody. Then we read the rules on uh, booze content. So we wanted to make it 4.8, soft, delicate, beautiful. Yep. Okay. That would be an RTD. So therefore, an RTD is it tracks a massive tax. A, uh, a $300 keg would have $220 worth of tax on it. Yep. So we read the rules a bit firmer and it said get it above eight, apples and cherries. To be clear though, the, the juice we made the product with originally was on its way to us before we realised oh, yes, we couldn't yeah. do what we wanted to do. In typical uh, Big Shed fashion, we'd, uh, we'd half thought it out, a little bit cop it up, <laughs> had to think about it quickly on the fly. So it arrived here and we thought, right, okay, how do we fix this? And we thought, right, okay, read the rules. The rules say it's above 8% it's a fruit wine. You pay the right tax and we pay the right tax as a fruit wine, however we call it a cider. So it, technically, it's a cider, pay the right tax, the ATO is happy, who cares? Genius. So a product that should have been soft and delicate ended up being an 8.5% monster <laughs> on the back of the RTD tax. So it's sort of counterintuitive, but yeah, there we are. So that product came from that. This one here was actually quite a funny story. I was, we've been making, we made that in 2015. My face was never supposed to be on it. It was always, every time it came through as a revision of the artwork, it was someone else's head. I'm like, just make a decision, what are they doing? And Craig didn't ever know at the time either, but the next thing you know, the final draft came out. So the day that we sent it to the press, it had my head on it. F year, for instance, is uh, nine o'clock Sunday morning, Semaphore Road. We're meeting up with the design guys, um, and we went, "What's stereotypically American? Pale, this, that." And, we'll, and all of a sudden, both of us sort of mumbled, "Team America, World Police." Yeah, America, favorite move. Yeah. yeah. 
we should call it f- care. We'll get in trouble for that. We yeah. should hyphenate it. That's better. So that's his, essentially how that came out. There was 9.15 or something like that on a Sunday morning. We had the meeting done and dust that the name was made. So That is so cool. Like the jetty jump up. So that came about as, you know, like my kids were in, in, in nippers and stuff. And we'd come up off the beach and you're hot and you want a, a decent beer that isn't full of booze. And it was just a struggle to find one. Um, so so it like, takes oh, let's, let's make a Let's make a mid-strength beer. Got all that hop aroma. It's refreshing. But you can drink two of them and not be sideways. Let's do that. So that's where it, that's where it started. So it came from that original idea, that concept. And then I was like, well, what does the beer do? Like, it's refreshing. Is it? It's just like remember, like we used to jump off the jetty. It was hot, and you in that splash of cold. You get the moment. It's the moment. Yeah. It's that. So that's where well, that's where the jetty jumper name came from. Um, and RPO was just a homage to the lovely suburb of Royal Park, which doesn't get nearly the kudos it deserves. <laughs> So oh, we, dropped, mate, we, we dropped the flag and we've now called a product after the suburb. So yeah. that's... We put the royal in the I park. mean, <laughs> you have put the royal in royal park. And we got told we couldn't trademark that. So we well, called it RPL because we couldn't trademark a suburb because that would mean everyone else would have to be in an infringement of our trademark. Well, well that's, when the next, so, that's when the next bit should be <laughs> you. So we, so we, <laughs> like so, that. we, we softened a little bit and went with RPL. <laughs> that is gold. I mean... I'm assuming, so how long do you, does a range last? Like, I've seen that cherry popper for a fairly long time. These, what you see You've in front of you are pretty much, these are core range, they're made year round. Um, we're actually going to okay. be releasing, oh, oh, we sort of talk about it, we're looking at a schedule. So we'll actually publish what we're going to make and when, so that we're, therefore if you're after a brew shock, for instance, you yep. know, two months of the year, go chase it down because it's only going to be available for that 60 day window. Perfect. So we're going to do things like that. So how do so people we, find that? Have you got somewhere online, like you're, you're a beer so we're still club in the process or, of, of or working that out? Yep. Exactly how that's going to roll because we've never, as Jay said, we've, we've been pretty much a fly by the city of pants kind of mob, which yep. has been good in a lot of ways, but painful in others. So the plan of attack is, yeah, as Jay said, to, to publish when things are going to be released and how and yeah, when and where and how often so people can then get pre-orders and stuff like that done. So that'll be up on the website uh, in due course. You know, you're going to have a core range. I'm assuming you've got a cult following. I, I'm, I can just tell. I Describe think, a cult. That could, that could be another, <laughs> that's another segment. It's, it's technical. Well, if you're not pushing people to join it on purpose, well, but you're showing them the way, you're leading the way, well, you're showing have, them the yeah. light, and you're not, you know, in, you know you're not, drugging them well, no, and they, you're not well, kidnapping them. Well, you know, they, they, they pay to join our club. They pay to join? Okay. Yeah, so we have a shed head group. So basically, that's, so that's no, no, a problem. We have, we have a shed head group, which is the guys that want to be inside the four walls of the business and know what's going on before the public. Yeah. They pay a membership fee to be part of it. Yep. They get discounts every time they come in. They get birthday awesome. burger for free. No, but, that's cool. But even, that... even beyond that, like the local support has been outrageous. Yeah. Like through this whole carry on, it's been so humbling to have people come through here, buy our food, buy our beers, and they do it, but you know, every week we'll see them. Yeah. And we don't have the same offer. Like we used to have this amazing offering, well, we still do, but it's just in hibernation, um, of a venue and all of that. And, yeah. and now we don't have that. Now yeah. we've got a, a hole in the wall that we provide them, but they're, they're still coming. Yeah. Um, and I can't tell you how much it means to us and my staff, or our staff and the crew and everyone to see people keep coming back you know, and, and supporting us. I don't think we under, properly understood how much those guys meant. Like there's, obvious, there's an obvious financial transaction that happens, but it's so much more than that. Yeah. And I'd like to think that when all this shit is done, that we'll have a situation where we have a newfound appreciation for people on this side of the bar, yeah. and they will have a newfound appreciation for us. Yeah. Because both sides are learning a lot about each other during this madness. So if we can get through this and get to that stage where we go, you know what, like, yeah. you supported us when you didn't need to, and you could, and, and and that means a lot. Look, I'll just show you how, expe- how, how important it is. I'm scared of that! <laughs> exactly, exactly why it's there. Um, it goes to show how important pubs and venues are because they, they are the centre of a, a very healthy community. Um, all of our regulars are actually having Zoom meetings with each other. So instead of standing next to them at the bar, they're yeah. cracking whatever they want at home and having a cool. 10 person Zoom meeting. Yeah. yeah. For me, like, I love seeing people enjoy what they do, and you guys absolutely love it. And that shows it, it comes out in your product, it comes out with your consumers, that, and it comes out with your cult following. It makes the hard days easy and the good days just awesome. And you know, and everyone just sees today and they don't realize it's 2002, starting off in a yeah. little place in Barossa, yeah. having to leave everything. You're pretty bad IT careers um, <laughs> and then going in you've been looking at my HR records haven't you and then going <laughs> in and then going into what you've uh, created here in a time where a lot of people are packing up the bags and saying I can't do it I've had enough 
you're on the front foot and you really are. It's an inspiration to the state and anyone else watching what you do. It's amazing you, and I'm, I'm so excited that we've come to see that. Yeah, we're, 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 great coin to turn early on. Once you can't touch the bottom of the pool, what does it matter? Keep f***ing swimming. No longer touch the bottom, the depth of the water no longer matters. It doesn't matter. That's so true, Keep and swimming. I think you guys are nowhere near the bottom. No. <laughs> I'm pretty friggin' buoyant. <laughs> <laughs> so there you have it, catching up with some of Adelaide's famous entre brunaires. And what more could I do than have a, my first beer for the day? So I think I'm going to have a yeah. <laughs> <laughs>